Hey everybody, welcome back. Guys, I've been getting a lot of questions, which I love, so please keep them coming. But I've been getting a lot of questions just on crossbow arrow tuning. So what I thought we would do today is I thought we would go over the simplest, the most basic, the easiest possible arrow tuning you can do on a crossbow. So I'll walk you through all the steps, show you all the things you need, so stay tuned. Let's talk about what I've got here in front of me. Let's talk about the supplies that you're gonna need, the same supplies that we've got out here, and then what it is that you're gonna be doing with this basic tune. So first, the bow that we're gonna be using, this is the Avalanche Extinction. So you guys might recognize this if you saw my review video on it. You also might recognize it because it is essentially the exact same bow as a Centerpoint RAF 430. So that is the bow we're gonna be using, and we're gonna be using the arrows that came with the bow just in the package. They are nothing fancy, just a six pack of very basic arrows. And one reason these arrows are a really good example why I wanted to do them, um, the knocks are glued in on these and I cannot get them out. I tried, they sent me some other arrows um, or some extra ones. I tried taking the knocks out to try doing a build on them and I just completely mangled two arrows. Um, so it makes it difficult to do a knock tune makes it a little more challenging to get inserts out if you want to add insert weight. So really on these, you're kind of limited to a basic tune. If these are ones you're going to want to hunt and, and shoot with, which is perfectly fine if you do, or really, I mean, any set of arrows that you guys get and you just want to do something basic, something simple, something that doesn't require a lot of components and tinkering and gluing and all that stuff. If you don't want to do that, but you just want some better accuracy out of your crossbow, this is the tune for you. So what you're going to need, you're going to need a Sharpie or a marker of some kind. You are going to need some paper. This is just standard computer paper. Um, you are going to need about five-ish yards to set that paper up. You could shoot inside if you want to. That's what we're going to do here tonight. You can shoot outside. It really doesn't matter. And then you're going to need something to keep that paper nice and tight. It can be anything you want. The setup I have going on right now in my shop is pretty hillbilly, uh, but it works. It's keeping the paper tight. Um, it's just a little wood frame that I made. I've got it propped up and clamped down to a piece of plywood. My target's sitting on my table saw. I've got a nice distance there. But it, it can literally be anything. You could make something really cool, extravagant, that looks pretty. You could cut a window out of a cardboard box and tape the paper to that. does not matter, as long as the paper's tight. The other thing with when you're setting that paper up relative to your target, you want to make sure your arrow can completely pass through the paper before it impacts your target. If it doesn't, if it's still in the paper when it hits your target, it's going to wiggle around. It's going to give you some really goofy tears and it's going to give you bad data. So you want this arrow to be able to pass 100% through the target, or sorry, through the paper before it hits your target. So guys, on this tune, tune really isn't the word for this uh, because we're not going to be changing anything on these arrows. We're going to just shoot same knock, same shaft, same fletchings, same insert, and the 100 grain field point that came with it. What we are going to be doing though is we're going to be using the results we get shooting through paper to sort these arrows and figure out which ones fly the best and which ones you know are flying a little bit wonky um what you're going to find what you should find is you're going to find a, a couple um maybe it's two or three that are going to be your best flyers uh those you're going to want to save for hunting because if they're coming out of your bow flying really well flying perfect or close to perfect they're going to do a lot better with a broadhead on them versus ones that are tearing left or right or high or low. So that's what we're trying to do. We're gonna just sort these. And the first step that I like to do with that Sharpie is you're gonna number them, one through six, one through however many that you have, however many you're gonna do this with. And I like to do that just really small on the veins, put dots, one dot through six dots, because this is just kind of our preliminary numbering system. We're gonna number them different here later um, based on the results of this um, paper tune or this paper test here. So start by putting dots on them, one through six. We're gonna run them through the bow. I'll show you guys, I'll shoot them, and then we'll look at the tears and we'll sort based on the field points here first. And then I'll go into how you sort and, uh, and match your broadhead to each of the uh, good flying shafts, if you wanna call them that, all right? So let's start shooting.
All right, so here's the results of our test to me, and hopefully it's the same to you guys. There are three clear winners here. The first one, the best arrow, was number six. This is a perfect bullet hole. That is exactly what we want. You can see point going in. So anytime you see just the, the circle part, obviously, and we'll go over this on some of the other tears, but the, uh, the point going in, perfectly straight, each fletching tear is a nice even tear in length. They're 120 degrees apart. That is exactly what you're looking for. That is a great arrow right there. That is definitely going into the uh, hunting arrow category. The other two that are pretty close to perfect bullet holes are number one and number two. These are my three hunting arrows right here. One, two, and six. So those are gonna go in the hunting bin. The other ones, three, four, and five, those are gonna be our practice arrows. Now, if you want to just kind of know what each one is doing, if we go to number three, you can see the circle. So this is the point going in, and this is the knock being above the point. So this is what we would call a knock high tear. All right, and number five, you can see some fletching tear, some tearing going on over here, the point over here, this fletching tear right here is really short compared to these. So that means our knock is over here. So this one, this is a knock right tear. Now, number four, you've kind of got two things going on. You've got uh, the point going in here, and then you've got your knock both above and to the right. So this is a knock high and right. All right, so we've got our arrows sorted. We've got our three hunting arrows. We've got our three practice arrows. Now let's talk about broadheads. First though, if you haven't done so already, you're gonna to need to sight in your crossbow. So if you've already done this, obviously you're good to go to start shooting broadheads. If you haven't, go ahead and take those three practice arrows. In our case, that would be arrows three, four, and five, and sight your crossbow into whatever range is on your scope that you want to. And then for shooting broadheads, I like to shoot at 30 yards. So 30 yards, it's really easy to be dead on at 30 yards with a field point. And all of our broadhead sorting is, is going to be comparing broadhead point of impact to field point. So having something that you can shoot dead on 30 yards should be pretty easy with a crossbow. And I also like 30 yards because with a broadhead on, it is close enough that if you get crazy broadhead flight, you should still be on the target. So you're not gonna lose or damage an arrow or broadhead. But at the same time, it's far enough that if you get that deviated flight, it's gonna be noticeable and that's what we want. And what we're gonna do, similar to our, our, uh, our arrows, is we're gonna number our broadheads. So let's just say for instance, and we'll, we'll start with fixed blades. Let's just say you bought a pack of Magnus Stingers. These are one of my personal favorite broadheads for crossbows, by the way. You're gonna put the same dots on them. So you're gonna put, one dot on one, two on another, three on another. And then we are gonna shoot each broadhead with, with each of our three hunting arrows. So in this case, I personally, I would start with the best one. And I think obviously that's number six as far as what our test went. And I'm gonna shoot each broadhead with arrow number six, and I'm gonna see which broadhead flies the best. And I'm gonna jot that down. So let's just say to keep this simple, broadhead number one flew the best, with arrow number six. And I'm gonna also note down how close it was to my field point point of impact. So how, you know, hopefully you're shooting bullseyes, how far from the bullseye is it? You're gonna do the same thing with your next arrow. So let's just say arrow number one, we're gonna shoot the same three broadheads with that. Let's say it likes broadhead number two the best. I'm gonna jot that down and then I'm gonna note down how far from the bullseye, how far from my field point point of impact was that matched pair. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my last shaft. Number two, I'm gonna shoot all three broadheads. Let's just say it likes broadhead number three the best, jot that down and how far away from my field point was point of impact. Now that you've got that, you are gonna say, okay, what is my best pair? Which one is it? Let's just say it's arrow number six and broadhead number one. Now you're gonna ignore the dots and you are gonna Sharpie a big old number one on your fletching and circle it. It could be one fletching, could be all of them, 
however you want to say this is my best arrow and you're going to do the same thing some marking i usually just sharpie on the blades of my broadheads and circle it too that that is now number one and that broadhead and this arrow that is a match set this is my number one flying hunting arrow this is the one that i want to be my first shot whenever i'm out in the woods because that is my best pair then you're gonna do the same thing what is your second best pair what is your third best pair if you get one where uh you get like a really good broadhead that that shoots the best with all of them um again you're, you're just trying to find what pair is my best one and from there you know what is the second best configuration i can put together what is the third best configuration i can put together now if you're a mechanical shooter you might think i don't need to do this because these things fly like field points i can just slap them on and number arrow number six is my best one and go and i wouldn't say you're you're wrong but there is still a difference in how a mechanical flies versus a field point i don't care what the box says for your mechanical this is not the same profile not the same aerodynamics as this right here so this is going to improve your mechanical broadhead flight doing this it's just not going to be as noticeable of an improvement or noticeable difference compared to a fixed blade because these do fly better they just don't fly exactly like a field point so what you can do if you want to you can shoot the actual broadhead you can number them the same you can do the exact same thing as you would do with the fixed blades um, and then you know resharpen the blades or replace them uh, or because it isn't as big of a a difference as big of a gain shooting a mechanical you can just shoot if it comes with a practice point you can shoot your practice point just one time with each arrow each of your three hunting arrows and see which you know one is the best then you'll know okay yep arrow number six was my best Arrow number one was my second best. Arrow number two was my third best. All right, everybody, to wrap this video up, I just want you to know the whole reason we did this is because we want improved broadhead flight and we want to know which arrows are launching off of our bow perfect or almost perfect to give us that enhanced broadhead flight. You know, field points are the most aerodynamic thing you can put on the front of your arrow. So had we not done this and had we just shot those six arrows with field points, honestly, they probably would have all grouped fine. And that's why we're saving those three bad ones as our practice ones, because they're going to fly probably just fine with a field point. But as soon as you put a broadhead on the front of it, especially a fixed blade that has that big blade surface area, basically wings on the front, any deviation left, right, up or down, it is just gonna be exaggerated when we put a broadhead on. So that's why we wanna find those arrows that are launching off of our bow the best. That's why we wanna mix and match those broadheads to find the perfect broadhead or the best broadhead for each particular shaft and ultimately pick the number one arrow broadhead and arrow pair that we are going to hunt with that is going to be our first shot that is going to lead to honestly just a more lethal setup more confidence for you and more success in the woods come this fall so you guys i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do me a favor hit that like button down below also don't forget to subscribe and on our next arrow tuning video for crossbows we're going to take it up a notch we're going to go from basic and we're going to add a few more elements to even more enhance our accuracy when it comes to crossbow hunting thank you guys for tuning in i hope you enjoyed remember be a sportsman make a sportsman